Okay, uh, let's get started. This is uh, API micro versions for operators, what, why, and how. Um, we're gonna talk about what is a micro version, why would someone wanna use micro versions, uh, how to use micro versions, and then we'll leave a little time at the end for some Q&A. So my name is Clinton Knight. I'm a software engineer at NetApp, focusing uh, uh, primarily on our uh, Manila and Cinder drivers. Uh, I've been in the application man uh, storage management space for about 17 years. Uh, the last two and a half, having a great time in OpenStack. Um, I'm a core developer in the Manila project, uh, and I did the port of microversions from Nova to Manila. And I'm Scott D'Angelo. I'm a software engineer with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Uh, started off with our HP public cloud uh, as a DevOps engineer and a deployer. Um, moved on to be a distro maintainer with our Helion product, and I'm an OpenStack Cinder core, uh, and I did the port of micro versions to Cinder. Um, and I'll say that the, the heavy lifting was done in Nova by Christopher Yo, who's no longer with us. He gets, he gets all the credit for the cleverness of micro versions and, and the hard work. We just ported it. So why use micro versions? Um, Sean Degg, when they rolled this out in Nova, put out a, uh, a blog post that sort of described several actors and why they would care about micro versions. Um, Jackson, Emma, Sophia, Aiden, and Olivia. And hopefully these actors will represent some or most of you here. So Jackson the absent is the developer who writes an app and, and disappears. The app lives on in production and it needs to continue to work as we bump the API versions. We can't, we can't break those existing apps. So this is a, a big deal today. We've argued for years in Cinder that we can't do things in our API that we'd like to do because it's gonna break uh, existing apps written uh, years ago, perhaps. So we needed a mechanism to be able to change our API and, and still maintain backwards compatibility. Then there's the opposite end of the spectrum we call Emma the active. That's someone who's consuming new APIs as they come out, very interested in the new APIs, um, willing to write the code to, to toggle on the logic. Sophia is similar to Emma, although in her case, she's writing a cloud application that has to run against multiple clouds. Uh, so she needs for her application at runtime to be able to inspect what it's talking to and react appropriately. So she needs to understand what, what all the different versions are, what features are available from each of the clouds that, that she's interacting with. Um, Aiden is a cloud operator, so he's the one that's deploying uh, the OpenStack services, managing the users. He needs to understand who is using the features of his cloud, uh, or conversely, who's not using certain features when they get old enough. He needs to know when it's safe enough to, to upgrade uh, in, in such a way that some really old features uh, might change in an incompatible way or, or disappear altogether. Uh, and, and then finally, like Scott and myself, Olivia is a, a contributor to the OpenStack projects. Uh, so, you know, historically, the major API versions in the projects only happened once every few years because there was a, a, a significant uh, effort to do that. Um, but she doesn't want to have to wait uh, months or years for the next major version to, to get her feature into the projects. Uh, so she needs a, a way to do that more quickly. So, so what are API versions? Uh, many of you are probably familiar with semantic versioning, major, dot minor, dot patch release. Um, OpenStack doesn't use the, the, the patch release idea, but we've traditionally done, done major versions uh, when you make an incompatible API change. Um, minor version would just be a, a new feature added that, that didn't break it. But micro versions, they're kind of like ma minor versions within major versions. In Cinder, we're at, we're at 3.17. We'll keep incrementing that, that second minor version number, but it breaks Semver. We will never add a new major number. We will never go to a 4.0, and, and with Manila and Nova, it's the same. They're at 2.x, 2.22. They will never go to a 3.0. Uh, but we will be able to make a backwards incompatible change uh, within the major version by using micro versions. So Cinder originally had an API endpoint, Cinder URL, port, and, and V1. Uh, we added a V2 endpoint in Grizzly, 
And it took until Juno for Nova to start using this new V2 endpoint. So that in of itself was, was a bit of a problem for us. We wanted to make some changes. We wanted Nova to be able to pick them up in less than a year and a half. Um, what happens if we need to keep adding breaking changes and versions? Well, you end up with a proliferation of endpoints. And uh, this drives the uh, service catalog people crazy. We were begged not to add a V3 endpoint, which we, we did for micro versions. But uh, this is a bit of a problem to keep adding endpoints uh, for deployers and, and the catalog maintainers. So the answer is, is, is micro versions. Uh, we added the V3 endpoint, uh, which is exactly semantically compatible with a V2 endpoint. And the reason we did that is we want people to know specifically that they're getting micro versions. So you'll always hit this V3 endpoint and we'll get to the, to the guts of how micro versions work. Uh, one other driver for this was we needed to make some changes in the API that Nova consumes. Uh, we wanted some new semantics for attaching and detaching volumes. We want to add volume multi-attach. Um, so we needed some way for Nova to be able to discover what version Cinder's at uh, without having to see which endpoints are there and, and, and hit different endpoints. So this also solves that problem for us. So how does it solve the problem? So microversions are fundamentally different than some of the, the, the previous mechanism where you had a, just a V1 or a V2. Uh, in that a microversion REST endpoint actually supports multiple versions of that API at the same time. See, with, with Manila v1 or Cinder v2, you get v2, and, and that's it. Um, and so the, the, the projects you know, did have some rationale for making compatible changes within v2, uh, but their hands were really tied for, for making breaking changes. Uh, if, if with microversions, since you can have uh, an endpoint, say the, the Manila, uh, the V2 endpoint as of uh, Newton uh, can actually service API requests from version 2.0 all the way up through 2.22 and everything in between. And yes, as Scott said, there are potentially breaking changes uh, along the way, uh, but, but that's okay because if something breaks you but you're asking for a, an earlier micro version, it, you're not going to have a problem. Uh, not only that, but each API within a given micro version is independently versioned. So Theoretically, you could write an application to list the Cinder volumes at version 3.5 and create a new Cinder volume at, at 3.10. Uh, there's probably not a good reason to do that, but it's, it's theoretically possible. They, these things are all independently versioned. Uh, so if you got one endpoint supporting all these versions, well, how does it know what, what to, to give you? And the answer is it, it's all up to the caller. A specific version of an API is requested by whoever is calling the REST endpoint. So and how does that happen? So REST uh, APIs from OpenStack are bound to HTTP. And so what the Nova guy said was, we'll define an HTTP header that you can send along with your REST uh, request and specify that the API version that, that you want to interact with. Okay, and so that, that's, and when I say version, that's, that's all of uh, the, the arguments, all of the return values, all of the semantics within the server are supposed to be preserved correctly for each micro version that that server uh, purports to support, okay? Um, and so what you see here is Nova defined this, this header, X OpenStack Nova API version, uh, followed by a version string. A Manila followed suit with OpenStack Manila API version. Uh, Ironic I also did, uh, I think they were the second project to implement micro versions. Um, after Manila did it, as the third project, uh, the uh, OpenStack API working group got a hold of this idea and, and recommended some changes to the header. So, uh, and that was in time for Cinder to pick up the new version. So you see the header for Cinder is OpenStack API version followed by the service name, volume, uh, and the, the micro version. So just be aware of that, that minor difference there. All right. So with a little bit more detail, and we'll see this in a, a live demo a little bit later, um, but, and if you didn't know, you can use the debug switch for some of the, uh, the clients, uh, including Cinder and Manila. It'll spit out the curl semantics for actually invoking something. So if you want to reissue the command yourself or, or tweak it or call a different API fairly easily, this is a, a good way to start. Uh, but, but you can see here, this is a, a get call to uh, Cinder v3. And in large font there, you can see the, the header, OpenStack API version, asking for volume micro version 3.2. So just because we have microversions and, and there's never going to be a Cinder v4, there should never be a Manila v3, 
Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that deprecation is a thing of the past. We, we still have to talk about that. Um, API deprecation within OpenStack has, has been something that, that's been pretty uncommon uh, and is itself a, a controversial topic. You know, there are some folks in the community who, who believe that once you've released an API, it should be there forever um, so that, that any application written to a, an API will never break. Uh, there are others in the community that understand that, that forever is a very long time. Uh, and after some period of years, uh, the, the, the weight of the baggage of carrying around really old semantics from, from old APIs uh, begins to impede forward progress. Um, so I think that's a tug of war that's probably going to go on in, indefinitely. Um, but specific to Cinder and Manila, you know, Cinder's at V3 with microversions. I think the Cinder community understands they've still got a lot of folks using the V1 API with, with Cinder. Uh, so I, I think they don't feel the freedom at this point to, to deprecate and remove V1. Uh, Manila being a little bit younger and, and behind Cinder and the adoption curve um, and, and having gone to microversions in V2, uh, V2.0 being functionally identical to V1, uh, the Manila community, we do feel like we have the freedom to deprecate and ultimately remove uh, V1 uh, without causing uh, any heartburn. Um, even if several years from now um, we've deprecated and, and potentially even removed the, the older non microversion endpoints. That does not necessarily mean that the deprecation is a thing of the past uh, at that point. Uh, so, uh, again, that, that's, that's going to be uh, uh, something that, that's subject to a lot of decision uh, and discussion. But, um, nevertheless, um, deprecation within a microversion endpoint would be accomplished by just raising the, the minimum version that a given endpoint uh, accepts. And that mechanism is already in the code. That's not a technical problem. That's purely a, a social one once, once folks aren't, aren't using the, the really old uh, microversions. Um, a, a few comments about experimental APIs. So I think uh, a lot of the project teams have realized that sometimes six months uh, just isn't enough to, to develop a really complicated feature. Uh, on the Manila side, we've been working on things like migration of file systems and, uh, and replication and, and other things. Um, and we've needed multiple releases to get to a point where we're comfortable enough with the API, supporting it long term. Uh, so uh, one of the things that, that I did when I did the, the port from Nova was to introduce the, the concept of uh, uh, an experimental API. Uh, the, the way that works is you, you simply, the developer uh, specifies in the code the, the micro version for a new API, but you can also set a, a Boolean flag that says this is experimental. And so the, the benefit for users with that uh, is that they get early access uh, to, to features uh, that, that are in development, uh, beta level stuff, if, if, you, if you will. Um, so they can kick the tires, give the project team feedback uh, before it's set in stone and, and uh, subject to uh, uh, you know, long-term support. Uh, but uh, of course, we don't want anyone to be surprised and, and develop an application calling an experimental API. Um, without realizing that, and so to invoke something that's ex experimental, you have to provide this additional header, OpenStack Vanilla API Experimental, as an explicit acknowledgement uh, that, that you know what you're doing, um, but you want to try this out. So uh, on the other hand, the, the benefit to the project teams are is that uh, an experimental API is defined as something that can change uh, or even be removed uh, without uh, uh, being subject to the deprecation rules uh, of OpenStack. So there's, there's a win-win on both sides, and we would love to hear from, from, from you guys, uh, from uh, deployers and end users, uh, if you find that, that uh, notion uh, valuable, the, the, the ability to, to try stuff before it's fully baked and, and offer feedback and be able to affect change. So just to give you an example but between Cinder and Manila that, that we work on, uh, both projects have been working on replication features for quite some time. Uh, Cinder has actually had a couple of false starts along the way. Um, and uh, at, at least one point decided that they needed to make a breaking change to the API for replication, um, and, and they did so without regard for the deprecation rules in, in uh, OpenStack. Um, I, I think in the position that they were in, that they, they did what they had to do, um, but nevertheless, uh, you know, Manila re released its uh, uh, replication feature with the experimental flag turned on those APIs, uh, and we've been able to, to mature that, that feature over a couple of releases. Uh, and we've really enjoyed the, the freedom of doing so while still being able to, to talk about the feature, get folks using it, demo it here at Summit, and so forth. So anyway, if this is something that you find valuable, we'd love to, love to hear from you. So how does this affect our, our, our actors? Um, the Cinder API uh, version 3 is, is identical to the V2 semantically, so 
we'll always have V2. In fact, we'll always have V1. We've, we've made that decision not to deprecate. So if you write an app and you disappear and your app lives on in production for years, it will always still work. We won't, there will be no breakage of, of anything no matter how far you advance the API. For uh, our, our Emma, the active user, um, we have a version discovery at the endpoint so you can find out the highest version supported by the server and she can use logic within her apps to decide whether to use these new semantics or not. So for the multi-cloud integrator, similarly, they can probe the cloud using the uh, version discovery and uh, see if they need to do anything that involves changing their apps. Um, our own infra is, is, is happy with this model because that's what they do. They run against, I don't know how many different clouds it is now, but five, six different clouds. Um, cloud operators can actually look at the inbound requests and see what their, what their users are using. If the users are still using older versions, they know that they have to support it. If users are upgrading their, their apps and they're using the, the newer APIs, they'll be able to determine that programmatically. And then as contributors, we can put new API features in much more quickly. Um, the, the, the core teams are much easier, much happier to uh, approve of changes to the API if they know that, that it's versioned in this way and they, that it's not gonna break anybody. So it's, it's changed the speed of development tremendously for, for new APIs. All right, so let's switch gears here and look at a demo of how micro versions work. Should we see that? All right. So when an application is interacting with a micro version endpoint, the first thing it's gonna wanna do is call the versions API to, to, to learn what versions are available uh, from that, that project, all right? So I'm gonna do a manila list command here with the debug switch so we can see what's happening. So a couple of things here. First of all, we see a get to the manila root without anything else there, no, no v1, no v2, no, no resource name or anything. Um, so this is the versions endpoint. It works the same way in Cinder. You, you can just send a get to the, the, the root of the endpoint. And what you get back is a 300, which means you know, multiple options, uh, and, and the body is a version structure. So we can see a couple of things here. We can see that the current version is available at the manila root slash v2. So the, the, the current manila version is, is version two. And if we look at the version fields, we can see the minimum version this endpoint is happy to, to work with is 2.0 up to 2.22, okay? There's also in this structure a supported value, okay? Uh, which is the v1 endpoint. And the version fields are empty. So we can learn a number of things here. There's, there's, there's two different uh, manila endpoints, v1 and v2. V1 is, is not microversion aware, but it's still supported. Uh, V2 is microversion aware, happy to speak all the way up to 2.22. So, but we asked for a list of shares. So here's the get to the V2 endpoint for shares, all right? And here is that magic header that we talked about, okay? API version 2.22. So this is us requesting from the middle endpoint uh, that the shares using the 2.22 version semantics, okay? Well, the server says, okay, no problem, 200. But it echoes back in the response headers the same thing, 2.22. This is the server's acknowledgement that I, I understood what you asked for. I'm giving the, you the version that you, that you want. Okay. So, and I'll interject that uh, Cinder's CLI does not do this automatic version negotiation. You'll have to say, I would like version 3.7, 3.10. Um, we're working on that for Okada release. I'm sorry, I always get it, Otaka. Um, for Okada release, we hope to have the same identical version negotiation where it'll automatically determine this highest supported version. But uh, as of now, you, you have to manually add this, uh, the choice of which API version you're asking for. Okay. So what happens if you don't send the header? Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here, but not send the header. So here we see the get, okay, to the v2 endpoint, but nowhere in here is the version request. Well, it's not an error condition. I still got a 200 back, and, but the server says, hey, you didn't ask for me for anything, 
So I'm going to give you 2.0. So that, that's the, the defined behavior of microversions. If a specific request is not made, uh, the microversion endpoint will, will, will respond with the oldest version that it knows how to deal with. Uh, so the, the theory being is that that would be the one that's most compatible um, uh, with the most clouds. You could have clouds with multiple you know, different versions, different releases, different newest versions, but if the oldest ones are all at 2.0, your application should work uh, across all of them. Okay. What if I send a microversion request to an endpoint that doesn't know anything about microversions? All right, so here I'm going to specifically ask for uh, the, the middle of 1.0 endpoint, which we know, or we saw was not microversioned. Okay. So here's the v1 request. Here's the header asking for 2.22. Okay. That's not a problem. So I, I said that the v1 endpoint is not microversion aware. Actually, it's just microversion aware enough. To, to echo the header back. You say, you asked me for 2.22, but you sent it to a 1.0 endpoint. I don't know anything about microversions, so I'm giving you 1.0. Have a nice day. Okay. All right. So it's important to understand um, as features are added to the projects, you know, the, the version, the microversion at which the features were, were added, or potentially a breaking change was made. Um, so let's do another call. Okay, so Manila, being the, the shared file services project, um, can provide the, the ex network export location list for, uh, for shares, all right? So I, I asked for this at microversion 2.8, okay? And uh, the server came back with 404. Hey, I don't know anything about that endpoint at microversion 2.8. I'm sorry, I, I can't help you. Well, turns out that API was added at 2.9. So as the, the application author, uh, you need to review the release notes for a given release. Uh, if there's a new feature that you want to use, because you'll have to specifically ask for a microversion at or newer than where it was added. So if I repeat the command with 2.9, it works fine. Uh, but you'll notice that there's an empty thing here. Okay, well, with, with network access to file systems, sometimes one path is, is more efficient than another. Um, but the data is not coming back. That's because the preferred path field was added at 2.14. So one more time, if I shoot the command with 2.14, we, we get the data. Uh, and, and so you know, some of our, our, our developers have asked, well, I just need to add a field to, to the response of an API. It's a compatible change. Do I really have to bump the microversion? Uh, and our answer is, well, yes, you do, because um, if someone is depending on this new field that you're asking, they need to be able to request the microversion and, and be guaranteed that it's going to come back so that they can use it. So virtually any change to, uh, uh, to the API will, would require a microversion bump. Uh, but the, the beauty of it is that bumping a microversion typically doesn't require uh, hardly any uh, code change, certainly no code duplication. It, it's, a, it's designed to be a very lightweight uh, mechanism. All right. So Scott mentioned a little bit about version negotiation. So uh, I'll show you how that works. Okay, so I've been using the Manila client, which is, is uh, happy to, to work with version 2.22, same as the server. But what if we have a newer client? I'm actually going to go into the client and change its version to 2.30, and then issue a list command. So we can see when we go to the versions command, this is when we, when we go and get the version. We actually send a microversion header. The versions uh, API itself is, is not, in fact, versioned at all. Um, but we can see that the, the, the client is, is starting with 2.30. Um, well, but the server comes back, uh, like we saw before, well, I'm, I'm good 2.0 to 2.22. And so it's the responsibility of the client you know, not to stray outside of what the server can handle. And so the client says, OK, fine. I see what you can do, server, so I'll, I'll talk to you on 2.22. The server responds on 2.22, and everything's fine. All right. Conversely, if I have an older client, I can reduce this number to say 2.15. And same thing's going to happen. Um, we start out with 2.15, but the server says, hey, but whatever, I'm, I'm good 2.0 to 2.22. Uh, but the client says, well, I'm not. I would really prefer to stick with 2.15. That's the best I can do. And the server says, OK, fine. I'll, I'll talk to you at the 2.15 version semantics, no problem. All right. So uh, with that, I think we're happy to take some questions. Uh, 
to uh, versions in like two years or one year. Uh, what happens after 10 years, you will have 200 micro versions and uh, this expand the code base enormously? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't expand the code base much. You really uh, version different functions or, or even different code paths within a, a method uh, with a simple wrapper. And so what you're really doing as you bump these versions is you're indicating that you've added a change which is often a, a, a backwards compatible change. So in the past, every time we would add a new feature, we would, we would do, write the same code. Um, we just didn't bump a minor version. In other words, Cinder was at 1.0 for oh, several years, then they went to 2.0. But we didn't, we didn't have any minor versions within it. So just because we're bumping these versions for every addition to the API or every new field we're adding uh, doesn't necessarily I mean, if we were using strict Sember, we would have been bumping that version for these changes. So the code itself is always going to be in there anyway. It's just got a simple wrapper saying API version 2.17, you, you execute here. It doesn't bloat the code. If you look at, this, at the Cinder code, and the Manila has a lot more in it, you can see that it, it's, it's just a wrapper around different methods or different logic within the method. Yeah, to, to answer your question, you know, Mill released uh, microversions in Liberty. And so after three releases, we're up to 2.22. So it's not something that we're going to see bumping very, very quickly. Um, but uh, like, like Scott said, it, it's, it's not something like it used to be with, with V1 and V2. You tended to have a significant duplication of code be between the, uh, the, the major API version bumps. With, with micro versions, uh, there's virtually no duplication. Um, so the, the, the hardest thing that a developer would need to do is to make sure that, that when he's adding the functional tests, uh, as well as unit tests to make sure that he tests um, the, the, the semantics of the API right on, uh, on either side of the micro version bump that he made to make sure that he preserved the older semantics of, of the API uh, as well as the new one. And the second thing is uh, API uh, compati compatibility. Basically, let's assume we have uh, some tester who decides to run script, test script, increasing API version one by one on each call. It would pass test or not if all those calls are available in all APIs. I mean, uh, when you have one request going to a P number 10 and second going to a P number 15, is internals of uh, project would be consistent with those changes in different versions. So I think I understand what you're saying. Um, your test will have to understand what those API versions are going to return and what they should expect. Yes, yes, uh, client side is okay. I mean on the back side, inside the project. Because all the IP was doing something less, new IP doing something more, and uh, you can get some records in database different depending on IP called. And this can lead to untested scenarios. Well, it's, it's the same old testing problem, right? At, you're adding more complexity, you have to have more complex yes, matrix. Yes, but the co complexity is 22 versions now. Yeah, yeah I, I completely understand. But if you think about it this way, um, let's say we didn't have micro versions and we just added Cinder Manage List to see what manageable uh, volumes are on a backend array. Well, you'd still have to test whether or not Cinder Manage List works. If you have an older version, a Liberty version, it doesn't have that. So how do you know, as a tester, what, whether you should test Cinder Manage List? Well, you know whether your server's running Liberty or, or whether it's running Newton. In this way, you can program the logic. You can say, if the server says it supports 3.17, I know that Cinder Manage List will work, I can run my test. If it doesn't, I can't. But in the past, you would have to know manually that you're running Liberty or you're running Newton. I mean, you, there's no programmatic way to discover what you, what, what you were doing unless you, you try to run the command and you'd get back a 404. This way, you can anticipate whether or not the, the method is supported, the API is supported by hitting the version endpoint and seeing the version. Yeah. So I don't know that it changes anything in tests. In the past, you still had to figure out whether or not it was supported. You just have, a, I think, a smoother mechanism. Yeah, and you know, we wrestled with how to test this thing. You know, we'd given infinite resources, we would run Tempest against every micro version we have. Oh. Uh, but you know, we're, we're, we're not doing that. We don't, we don't feel the need to do that. Uh, but, but like I said, every time we bump them with a version, uh, the tests around whatever changed, you know, we'll, we'll test it before and after the, that particular version to make sure. You know, if I had a field at a given micro version, 
Uh, we'll actually add code to strip that field out for previous microversions so the API appears to work the same. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I wanted to get your opinion on uh, an issue we had in Nova. Um, recently, we removed the Nova network functionality, and we used a microversion bump simply as an announcement that at th after this point, now that this is out, you can no longer call Nova network uh, functions. You can still call the old micro versions for any of the other previous things that changed, but this idea that micro versions make everything backwards compatible, it raised, it raised some controversy. Right. Should we do this, or should we bump everything up past that level, make raise the minimum, but then all that old functionality is gone? Yeah. So I was wondering if you guys had run into anything like that so, and how you approached it. So in Cinder, we haven't run into it, but we started to discuss it. And, and people are very hostile to the idea of removing something in the way that Nova did. We know, we're, we know Nova did it, and, I, and Manila has done this. And there's definitely people in the Cinder community that are completely against this. Um, now, there's a deprecation cycle, so you could, you know, we, we floated the idea of if we follow the standard deprecation, can we remove stuff? Well, yes, you know, the, but we would probably be very hesitant to do what, what Nova d has done and Manila has done the same thing. In, in Cinder, people yeah. are, are pretty yeah. adamant against but it. Even with the deprecation cycle? Well, with the deprecation <laughs> cycle, maybe, because we've deprecated things that are yeah. clearly not being used or they're, you know, yeah. but to remove something in the way, you know, that you guys have, I, I don't know that we would do that. Okay. I mean, so we're still supporting V1 forever. We're, we're, <laughs> we, people raised their arms in, in, in protest when we talked about it in Tokyo, and yeah. including infra mainly. We're like, we, yeah. we still use V1. So in Cinder, people are very much more conservative about removing things. Yeah, your, your question is very relevant to Manila, you know, because uh, with Manila, we're providing, you know, file systems, you know, network file systems to directly to instances. And so we do so with Nova Network, with Neutron, with standalone config options. And so the removal of, of Nova Network was definitely of interest to us. Um, and so we blame you, uh, just to be clear. Um, but but you, know, you guys followed a, a clear deprecation policy uh, for that feature, and, and we chose to do exactly the same thing. You know? So with a certain micro version, we, we, we will strip out um, uh, Nova Network support, but we are following deprecation rules in that case. So I guess the removal is one thing. The other part of it is is a micro version change that doesn't give a changed functionality. It's just a marker saying this is where we remove this functionality. Is that consistent with your understanding of how micro versions work? Uh, well, yeah. So in in uh, as far as we can, you know, we'll try and preserve older semantics. But you gave an example where it's just not going to be possible for us to continue to support something. In this case, we couldn't if we wanted to. Nova Network is gone, right? And, and so you know, in that case, we have no choice. We can't provide that functionality in older micro versions. So we'll, we'll announce it to the world with the, the deprecation announcement and then strip it out at a given micro version. So the, the unfortunate thing is that when, I don't know who first added this second endpoint, you know, Cinder maybe or somebody, um, they shouldn't have done that. I and mean, if we'd had a micro version from the start and we wanted to use Semver, you could just bump up to 2.0 and go from there, and then you can go bump up to 3.0, as long as you didn't have this proliferation of endpoints, if you'd have just kept it all at the, at the, the root endpoint. But since we started down that path, it would confuse users if we ever bump the major version without adding a new endpoint, is, is sort of the, the wisdom, the conventional wisdom. I don't know if that's true, but so now we can't say, hey, breaking change, we, Nova, we just removed you know, uh, Nova networking, we'll just bump to 3.0. Well because people expect a, a slash v3 endpoint. And so that's unfortunate because, because everything would be great if we had this from the start and you could just bump the major version, have no endpoint, and just use the micro versions to figure out where you're, where, what you want. Good, all right, thanks. Yeah, I don't think there's an easy answer there. Um, I just wanted to ask you if you rely on a common framework for, uh, to implement a micro version? No. Which framework? Common framework. I mean, we, you know, yeah. ultimately this all should get moved to Oslo. There's a lot of commonality. Um, there's some subtle differences in how people do it between Manila and, and Nova. And Ironic actually um, isn't even yeah. using WSG, so they've got a, a quite a bit of different code. So that's a, that's, yeah. ultimately it should be. I mean, it's, there's, but 
you know, yeah. we're, we're very, since Manila was forked from Cinder, you know, we're already very code compatible. And so the, 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 these two are very similar. Nova, we, you know, we ported from originally. So it's very possible to do, at least with those three services, and should be done someday. I mean, it's a typical, somebody does something, someone else does. Sooner or later, it goes to Oslo when someone wants to do the work, but it's not there yet. Other questions? No. All right. Thanks, everyone.